Hello friends, welcome back to another reading vlog. I think at the start of this week it was blizzarding and snowstorming, which was amazing and I loved that so much, but now it is literally a summer's day out. Um, this morning I very impulsively decided to chop all my hair off again um, and now it's like quite poofy, but I feel a lot lighter. <laughs> mm. I might go a bit shorter, I don't know, I have to see, I have to even out the back because it's all like, you know? Um, I'm reading five books at the moment, so we have a lot to talk about this week. The first book I'm currently reading is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I'm really liking it, honestly. It's quite a long audiobook, I think it's 18 hours, and... I have to say the writing is quite repetitive, um, not only in the style of the writing itself, but also in the events that keep happening because it is quite a circular type of book. It's also quite repetitive plot-wise, I suppose, because we're following this girl named Adeline and she makes a deal with this devilish thing because she does not want to get married to this farmer where she lives in France in the 1700s and because she makes a deal with him and she's not really supposed to make a deal with these kinds of dealers, I guess. Um, she is cursed with being immortal, but no one remembers her. She can't speak her name, she can't write it, no one will know who she is after they've turned away from her, if they don't look at her, if she's not in their minds. So we follow her over a whole bunch of lifetimes as she lives human history, never being remembered by anyone. And it's, it is quite a sad book, but um, there's also so much in it that makes you want to live um, your own life and makes you want to do things and explore the world and it's also the kind of book that makes me want to write. It's the kind of book that's making me want to sit down and write my own book. That is Addie LaRue. I'm also in the middle of a buddy read with Lucy from Crescent Pages and this book, oh, oh my gosh, it's breaking my heart. I'm loving it so much it's so it's so good that book is the dark interval letters on loss grief and transformation and these are letters from rilke this one is translated and edited by ulrich bear mm -hmm. so we are buddy reading this together and i'm just it's breaking my whole heart these are letters that rilke has written to people his close friends and people sometimes maybe it's their first correspondence they've just lost someone or they're experiencing grief or they themselves are quite sad and dealing with death or transformation or things like that but there's just been so much in here that just hits you right in your little soul and it's there's no words. Um, I think we've both cried already like a bucket full of tears over this. So yeah, I'm just, I'm really, really glad that I have Lucy along with me reading this because it's such um, a very like nice, comforting experience to read this with someone and to know that they're reading the same words as you. I've tabbed so many quotes that I love. Let me see if I can just read you maybe one. First of all, I just love Rilke's idea of death um, as being so central and so part of life and something not to mourn about but to experience intensely and in some cases to celebrate because it is death is a life experience especially for those whose passing we perceive ourselves so it's just so beautiful and if i could really maintain this um school of thought and thinking about life and death it would just be the most beautiful thing i could um fathom this one's really nice if people took some simple pleasure in reality which is entirely independent of time, they would never have needed to come up with the idea that they could ever again lose anything with which they had truly bonded. No constellation is as steadfast, no accomplishment as irrevocable as a connection between human beings, which, at the very moment it becomes visible, works more forcefully in those invisible depths where our existence is as lasting as gold lodged in stone, more constant than a star. Um, this one is also just incredible. Haven't you felt your father's influence and compassion a thousand times from the universe where all, truly all, is beyond loss? Don't believe that something that belongs to our pure realities could drop away and simply cease. Whatever had such steady influence on us had already been a reality independent of all the circumstances familiar to us here. All of our true relationships, all of our enduring experiences touch upon and pass through everything, through life and death. 
We must live in both, be intimately at home in both. For is life really more demystified and safely entrusted to us than that other condition? Are not both conditions in a place namelessly beyond us, out of reach? I don't know why I let myself be surprised every single time I come back to Rilke because I will turn a page and um, something will just be there that it, it's a mirror or it feels like something you could have written yourself and it's just that feeling in your chest where like it won't, it, it, you know. Anyway, I'm currently 26 pages through this. Um, it's gonna be one of my favorite books ever. I'm so glad that this collection was collected and um, it does mean I am going to be ticking off another of Rilke's books that I have um, on my shelf that I haven't yet read. So really, really glad that we're reading this together right now because it's so needed and so loved at the minute, so. That is the dark interval. I also started the Dark Academics Book Club pick of November, which if you don't know is The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. Now I have the weirdest edition of this book. I really don't like it. Um, I found this thrifted, but it is this edition. Um, I like graphic design as well. This came from some high school um, somewhere where like it, it was a textbook, I guess, for their high school English class. But regardless, I am now making my way into chapter seven of The Turn of the Screw. I found an audiobook recording of it on YouTube. Um, if anyone is looking for a free version, um, it's honestly fine. It's the first one, the one I think with the most views, maybe. I have to say, I am really not struggling, but the writing that is employed in here once we get to the ghost story and the narrative of the governess who is talking because this book is about the experience of a young governess who is sent to watch over two young children at Bly Manor and their names are Miles and Flora and they are like perfect children in every aspect and regard um, and she is so taken and charmed but the writing of her narrative that someone else is reading in uh, the future once her story is over to a group of people as a ghost story. The writing of her narrative is so tricky. Um, it's very tricky. I don't know if it's just me, but the sentences sometimes are tripping me up and it's that kind where I have to go back and either listen to it or read it again to really, really make sense and to kind of see what's happening because it's so, it's a little bit confusing. It's a little bit strange. I am really, really liking it because there's so much ambiguity and there's so much about like, narrative and talking it's almost kind of like how the tale of frankenstein is related to us a little bit because there's so many degrees of removal which is a theme that i love because it adds again another layer of ambiguity and kind of just like what is really going on so if anyone else is joining us this month um and you're currently reading this please let me know what your thoughts are so far without spoiling anything um because i would love to know so there's like a face here and then there's like a face in um the window there's some dude in there but then i just realized that there's also a face i don't know if you can see that in the literal candlestick like what i'm also about to finish a different audiobook today called crash of fate um by zoraida cordova and it's a star wars book I think we all know how much I love my Star Wars books, but if you're new here, I'm kind of obsessed with reading. Well, I'm not really obsessed, but I really enjoy reading Star Wars stories. Um, so uh, I'm just not liking Crash of Fate though, because I love Star Wars stories that are like wholly original characters and concepts and don't really have to do with any of the events that take place in the films because um, I just love the world and it's really compelling to follow people whose backstory and futures you don't intimately know but this one um the writing's just not great i'm not attached to any of the characters and I, i'm finding it really boring so we're following jules and izzy and they've lived on batu for all of their lives and eventually well no jules has and then one day izzy comes back when both of them are grown up and then they go on this mission together but um it's just uh, it could have been good, but I'm just, I'm finding it really dry and just, I'm not caring about it. So I don't think I'm going to do enough of it because I'm almost done, but that is that one. And then finally, the book I started today, which I've been meaning to read for ages, is Bluettes by Maggie Nelson. I'm so, so excited to read this. This was a gift and the little note that went with it said that Maggie Nelson is to me what Ann Carson is to you. We know how I feel about Ann Carson. So this is, I don't know, poetry 
poetry, musings, collections, contemplations all about the color blue, I believe mostly on human suffering, on love, on the creative writing process and stuff like that. I'm only um, nine pages in right now, eight pages in, but there's been a lot that I've really, really loved. It's so beautiful. Of course, I had to use like blue tabs. Yeah, very happy about this. Hi, it is, what is today? Tuesday. I think it's Tuesday. I think it is Tuesday. Um, I have a little bit I wanted to discuss in Turn of the Screw because things are getting quite creepy. There's this whole like, the relationship between the governess and the two children, Miles and Flora. I'm not really sure how much is going one way or the other in terms of manipulation and possession and power and influence because the governess really, really takes it upon herself and in her narrative, she's constantly alluding to and mentioning how perfect of an opportunity and how amazing a chance it is to be able to form and to mold these children and to help them grow up and to teach them about the world. But there's so much that also could be said for the other way because um, it's a little bit, I guess, in the fairy tale aspect of the book because she's constantly saying that she's under a spell, that she's so taken in by how amazing and wonderful and angelic these two children are. And it's really, really creepy because I don't really know what's going on, but as the writing is starting to unspool more and more, we see that like, like she is kind of experiencing things that we don't know if it's her imagination, if it's reality, if it's someone else's reality. So she's saying about Miles that he is an angel. Of course I was under the spell, and the wonderful part is that even at the time I perfectly knew I was, but I gave myself up to it. It was an antidote to any pain, and I had more pains than one. But with this joy of my children, what things in the world mattered? That was the question I used to put to my scrappy retirements. I was dazzled by their loveliness. And then a little bit further on, as she starts to use and kind of get into this mindset of the possessive of mine and my, um, and like they belong kind of to her and they're her entire responsibility. It's almost like she's their mother or she's their sole protectress and informer of everything in the world, but it's still like push and pull in kind of two ways because she says i walked in a world of their invention they had no occasion whatever to draw upon mine 
so that my time was taken only with being for them some remarkable person or thing that the game of the moment required. So it's also like she's losing kind of her identity into the children. Um, and there's just so much there that scares me and that's so interesting about families and about bringing children up and family ties and motherhood and stuff like that is that when you devote so much of your time to these children like your identities start to warp and meld and melt into each other however it is particularly frightening in turn of the screw because it is kind of a ghostly story where i'm not really sure what's happening but um just that kind of fusion of identity or losing yourself because you just spend so much of your time and so much of the energy of your identity trying to form someone else's to the point where maybe it goes too far and you lose too much of yourself and then it like rebounds back i don't know i don't think this is making any sense but i think it's a really really horrifying um topic in this book particularly so anyway that is turn the screw i'm gonna go listen to probably the rest of chapter seven right now as for rilke i have not made any more progress since i think i've last talked to you i'm currently on the letter to lou who's one of his closest friends um and introduced him to freud and i think they went on trips a number of trips to russia together so lots of people have been asking about where to start with rilke and honestly like i think always his letters i always suggest letters to um a young poet because i think there's just so much in there that is so nice to be introduced to him. I don't want to recommend The Dark Interval if you're not, I think, like emotionally prepared for it because it is taking a toll, not in a negative way necessarily, but um, there's just so much heaviness and so much truth and so much like really emotionally um, stimulating stuff in, in these letters because they are about death and about loss. Um, so yeah, that being said, I am absolutely adoring it. So that is that. I think I'm gonna go get out for a walk in the sunshine because it's very, very warm today. Again, unfortunately, I wish the snow would come back. I'm back from a little walk. It's very, very warm out. This morning, I also got to do one of Kira's new yoga videos because if you guys don't know, Kira, who you probably know from Kira Foster is her channel. She actually just started a YouTube, separate YouTube channel for yoga, which I'm so excited about. I'll leave it in the description. It's called The Yoga Corner. Um, so I did one of her classes today and I loved it. I really, really loved it. I think she's a brilliant teacher um, and I love her so much and it's so, fun now that I get to do like yoga um kind of with her and through her channel so that is what I did this morning and I think right now I'm gonna go make some dinner I think I'm gonna try to do some like taco burrito thing <laughs> also very quickly the Goodreads Choice Awards nominations are in today I think for the semi-final round so really quickly I'm gonna vote on those I don't have many votes to cast because I haven't really read a lot of new releases this year but um, the first one is for best fiction, and I think honestly for that one, I'm gonna go for If I Had Your Face by Frances Cha because I read that one a few months ago and really, really loved it, so that's what I'm voting for. In horror, I'm going to vote for Mexican Gothic because I really liked it. <laughs> All right, so I've got the audiobook ready for Turn of the Screw. Um, so I basically just listen and then if I hear something I want to like tab or annotate or um, try and read the page myself and just mark it up um, like I have done a little bit, I'll just pause it and do that. There's depth, depth. The more I go over it, the more I see in it. And the more I see in it, the more I fear. I don't know what I don't see, what I don't fear. Mrs. Gray tried to keep up with me. You mean you're afraid of seeing her again? Oh no, that's nothing now. Then I explained. It's not seen her. And what on earth? I felt her incredulity as she held me. But that's the horror. She kept it to herself. The child of eight. Alright, so it's like fi oh, I just saw a bat. It's like five o'clock and um, it's, it feels like midnight, great. So I started um, another audiobook today because I finished 
Crash of Fate, the Star Wars um, book. I gave it two and a half stars. I was kind of very underwhelmed by it. I'll still always recommend like star certain Star Wars books to people who enjoy sci-fi in general and who enjoy kind of fantasy action adventure books as well because I think even if you don't like Star Wars and if you're not super invested or if you don't know anything about Star Wars, I think there's still like really fun stories. So the next audiobook I have on the go I think is called, yeah, it's called Little Gods um, by Meng Jin and it's really interesting. It's about, it's about a bunch of things but um, I'm really loving it because it involves a lot of physics and math. One of our characters is a physicist and she's trying to reverse the way that the human mind has its concept of time like running one way with like the second law of thermodynamics and entropy how things could change and things would change if we reversed it if things over time became orderly instead of disorderly i love books that focus on math and physics because for a long time i wanted to go into physics um more when i was younger but I still love seeing it discussed in literature because I find it so interesting. My Goodreads goal is really creeping up on me and I don't have that much time to finish it. I guess I have this month and next month, but...